This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at simple tricks and pithy tips in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this excerpt, I'll show you the new proxy workflow in Adobe Premiere, which is especially relevant for 4K video. Let me illustrate how this works. I'm going to go to the media browser, press the tilde key to blow that up, and notice this ingest setting. I'm going to turn ingest on and click the wrench tool. What this is, if you've seen Prelude, you've seen this before, and if you've been ignoring Prelude, then this is brand new inside Premiere. I have several options when I ingest, that is to say, bring media in from the camera card. If I have the camera card plugged into the computer, I can copy it from the camera card to the location of my choice, primary destination, I'll pick a folder, and I can copy it with MD5 verification. There's a debate going on about whether the finder accurately copies files or not. And one way to make sure that the finder actually copies the files accurately is to use file verification, which is what MD5 verification does. It compares the byte of every file in the original with the location of the byte of every file in the destination, and it makes sure that they match. That's what MD5 verification is doing. It makes sure that the two files, source and copy, are precisely the same. So if I want to guarantee that the files that I'm copying from the camera card to the hard disk match, then I would use ingest settings, copy, copy with MD5 verification, and specify where I want that project stored in what folder on my hard drive. Well, this is perfectly okay, although I haven't had problems with the Finder copying files. I tend to use the Finder. That's not to say that this is bad. It's just to say that I tend not to use it. But where I do use it is this one. If I'm working with 4K media, I want to copy the 4K media from my camera card and at the same time create proxy files. Proxy files are files which are smaller, both in frame size and in file size, than the camera native media. Now, because I've already copied the files to my hard disk, I'm just going to create proxies. The general rule of thumb is, if I'm working with 4K media, create a proxy file which is one quarter the size of your source file. This will be red footage. Red footage is 4196 by 2160. So I divide both those numbers by 4, and I'm going to create proxy files, which are 1024 by 540. I'm going to store them wherever I want. I'm going to create a location. We'll store it on the desktop, and we'll call it proxy files. It can be stored anywhere. You can even use the default. That's perfectly OK. The only rule is you don't store proxy files in the same folder as your source media, because there's a really good opportunity the two file names will get confused, and you want to prevent that. So I set a destination for my proxy files. I create proxies. If I'm working in the Macintosh, I want to use Apple ProRes 4 to do proxy. If I'm working in Windows, I want to use GoPro Cineform. So depending upon which operating system you're in, both the Mac and Windows will play back ProRes and Cineform. So you're not restricting yourself from a playback point of view, but from a recording creation of proxy point of view, ProRes 42 proxy created on the Mac is better, and GoPro Cineform created on Windows is better. So once I've got that set, click OK. Now I'm going to go to some 4K footage here. I've got these two clips. Both of these were 4K files. Both of them were shot red. They're red native. I click Import. It imports those two files. Press the tilde key, bring it back. And now I've got proxy files created, or I will have proxy files created. Because in the background, what Premiere is doing is it fires up Adobe Media Encoder, and it creates the proxy files using Adobe Media Encoder invisibly so that while you're busy editing in the foreground, it's creating proxy files in the background. So let's create a timeline. And we'll just say uh, here, I'm going to drag this clip down into the timeline, change the sequence settings, and delete the clip. Now let's just make our 
By the way, that was the fast way to configure uh, a timeline so that it matches the clip settings. If you edit a clip in, the project settings will always win. If you drag a clip in from either the browser or the source monitor, and the clip settings and the project settings don't match, it'll give you the ability to change the clip. All right, so let's just select our two clips here, type a period, edit them down, backslash to have them fit. And now I'm looking at the clips. But how do I tell if I'm looking at a proxy file or the master file? And the answer is you can't unless you make some changes. I'm going to click the plus key which allows me to change the icons inside the program monitor control window. I'm going to grab this icon right here, which is toggle proxies, and drag it down. And there is the proxies icon. When I click OK, now I've added this icon. When this icon is white, I'm looking at the camera master files. When this icon is blue, I'm looking at proxy files. Master files, proxy files. Master files, proxy files. I could, if I want, also go up to the Preferences setting. It's under Media. Notice that Enable Proxies is checked. This is another way to turn proxy playback on or off, but it's easier just to work with this icon. This icon can be in the Program Monitor, the Source Monitor, or the Preference setting. But how do I tell if proxies exist? Let's go to List View here. And let's go up to the Metadata Display. And let's twirl down Metadata and turn on two checkboxes. The first is Status, which is on by default. And the second is Proxy, which is off. And click OK. Now when we enlarge this, if I grab Status, there's proxy, there's status. Okay, I'm going to grab the status and drag this way. Grab the proxy and drag over. So I can change the columns by simply grabbing the header and dragging it. Notice that I have two clips, both of which are online and both of which have proxy files attached. So when this is blue and the proxy files are attached to the clip, I'm going to see the proxy file. When this is white, I'm going to see the original, the camera native media. And I create proxies by using the ingest setting inside the media browser. Now, proxies are not fully enabled throughout all of Premiere. They don't necessarily work for a variety of functions. You want to take a look at the help files and see where proxies work and where they don't. They do work for straight cuts-based and, and dissolve editing, but they don't show up everywhere, and you want to check and see what the limitations are. What I've seen so far from my testing is regardless of how this button is set, when I export a file... I'm always going to be exporting the camera native file, so I'm going to export at the highest quality. Thinking of exporting at high quality, notice this setting right here. This allows you to determine how high a resolution your render files are going to have. Full means that every pixel in the original file will have a pixel inside the render file. Setting this to one half means every other pixel will be represented. Setting this to one quarter means every one out of every four pixels will be represented. If you are bogging down your system and it's taking too long to get stuff done, change the render setting from full to half to quarter, and the amount of time you spend rendering will decrease. You want to make sure this gets set to full, however, before doing final export. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at simple tricks and pithy tips in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 213. By the way, if you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,600 movies, hundreds of hours, all in-depth, and all up to date.
Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers both Adobe and Apple software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.